scrapes, mock scrapes, licking branches. How to find them, how to hunt them, tips and tricks. Everything you need to know in this video. Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about something that's commonly requested deer scrapes. Primary scrapes, mock scrapes, how to find them, what they are, how do deer use them, tips, tricks, random facts. You'll want to stick around because we got some pretty good information for you. So yeah, what are we doing right now? We're going to drive to one of our properties. We got to move a camera. We're going to be making one of those said mock scrapes. We've shown you every tactic that we use, why we use it, and how it's worked for us. Yeah, a major theme that we've seen across YouTube and the hunting industry is everybody's making mock scrapes and it's a whole big ordeal. They have like medical gloves, they got they buy this super expensive stuff, and in our experience it just doesn't have to be that complicated, doesn't have to be that difficult. We've had a lot of a lot of success just doing our simple version, and that's what we're gonna show you today. So stick around. Let's go. A scrape is just a way of communication for deer. It's a place where they can leave their scent. A way of basically seeing who's in the area. All right, so I think there's actually a couple scrapes along the way, but we're gonna go grab a camera and move it real quick. This is what you call a side quest? Deer will paw away the debris on the ground, exposing the soil, which acts as a host for scent. The deer then use their glands, which carry a ton of scent, and begin rubbing their glands all over the overhanging branch and the ground below. They sometimes even pee in it. Just destructive. Don't mess with me. I will kill you. The last time we, we were here, you see where this corn ends right here? Where? Right there. Bruh. Right after this, in this little smaller bean field, we saw like 50, 60, 70 deer. Like, I couldn't count them. I, I think it was at least two. Dude, made you look. There actually were like probably 70 deer over here. That was probably at least 100. What, what are we doing? Go, what? what are we I doing? thought you were asking me, like, we've discussed this. Um, right now, this is a camera that I had set up two weeks ago, three weeks ago, mid-August. And we've decided that we're going to take this camera and move it all the way over to a different side of this property. This is like right around 200 acres. Um, somebody had set a blind like literally 40 feet away. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the other side. That was the point anyways. That was the that was the initial goal is to kind of be away from everyone else who's hunting this property. And it seems like they all like this corner, which is fine. We do think that there's a, a completely different herd over there. So we're gonna try that. And along the way, see if we can find some scrapes. Cause we know of some over there by where we're gonna have to walk past anyway, so. Again, quick side quest. Here's that scrape I was talking about. A lot closer than I thought. Okay, so. As you guys can kind of see, we're on this bean edge. And we got this low overhanging branch. You can kind of see where they've been eating and messing with them. In general, it's just a good spot because if you look over, this is a lot of bedding. And there's a couple trails that come out of the bedding right into the bean field. And that's why we set up a camera here because we've been glassing this for a few nights and they always come out right around here. But there's a couple different scrape trees all the way down here, but this just looks freshly hit. Um, but basically you'll be able to tell if it's a low hanging branch, they call it like a licking branch. You can definitely tell that they've been kind of eating eating away at it a little bit. You can tell that these have been kind of eat, eaten and like rub, rubbed off. Um, scrapes are used all year round, but you're gonna see at the peak of, you know, scrape usage right around the breeding season like a little bit before during it'll plateau during and then it'll kind of bridge back off but they do use it um all year round mid-october is whenever if we start seeing a lot of the pollen at the ground obviously they use the looking branches year round but and i'd say like i think the stats like 86 or 87 percent of all scrapes are done at night so it's kind of hard to see them actually doing it a lot of people will have like cool footage of it um, on like farms and stuff like that. The biggest thing, kind of what we were talking about before, is whenever it rains like it was earlier, that's kind of what the tip was, is whenever it rains, it eliminates a lot of that scent. So you'll get these big bucks coming through, uh, marking their territory and hitting those scrapes that they've been hitting before mm -hmm. at night. For sure, so like, you can hunt over scrapes, but again, most of the scrape activity happens at night, no matter where you are. But if you just had like a fresh rain, 
a lot of times they'll come by, they'll check it, and they'll refresh it. So like, rain kind of washes away the scent a little bit. So what deer like to do, um, and not just bucks, but fawns, does, any deer can hit a scrape. Um, they'll kind of freshen it up just to kind of like put their scent back in their area, especially if it's a buck's core area. Okay, so now that I know what a scrape is and how it works, where do I find them? Scrapes can often be found on field edges, pinch points, near a water source, near a food source. If you can locate the trail between their food source and their bedding, a lot of times there will be a scrape somewhere between there. But you're not going to find them just randomly in the woods. If you find a scrape, they've strategically placed it that way on purpose. The same principles apply when you're making a mock scrape. Don't just randomly put it somewhere and try to hunt over it. Place it strategically in between their food source and their bedding area to get your best chance at catching a buck in daylight. So as you guys can see, this is another really good example of those licking branches that we're talking about. Again, it's not always about what's on the ground, if they're pawing or not. Depending on the time of the year, they might not be doing that. Uh, but as you guys can see, these all have leaves and stuff like that. All these low hanging branches at deer height, they're all gone. They're all eating on these ends right here where you can see they're broken off. And I guarantee if you were to set up a camera here, there's, there's deer, whether it's does, whether it's bucks, uh, but there's definitely gonna be deer here uh, licking on it, leaving their forehead gland scent, and also just marking their territory. So another big thing to look for in the summer months, especially on these field edges where all these beans are, uh, that's where they spend the majority of their time eating and bulking up. So just another tip to look for. So yeah, scrapes for us are a little bit more for inventory just because 85% of them are hit at night. However, it's discovered that two weeks that are leading up to the peak breeding season, mature bucks will hit 6 to 12 scrapes every hour that they're on their feet. So in that time period, it might not be a bad idea to hang a stand around a scrape, especially a primary scrape. Whoa, whoa, hold up. Primary scrape? There's more than one type of scrape? Um, some people don't think so, but in our experience, yeah. Primary scrapes are going to be located under the same overhanging branch year after year. You're going to get a little bit higher volume, the scrape might actually be a little bigger, whereas a secondary scrape is usually a little bit smaller. They can usually be found on like heavy trails, definitely not going to get as many deer actually using them. And the next year they probably won't be there. But as you can see we have a trail, overhanging branch, scrape. So. The biggest thing that guys make mistakes of is they'll go out there and they'll make a mock scrape, but they'll put it in the middle of the woods. Like, you gotta be strategic if you're gonna make a mock scrape, put it on a trail like this. But if you put it where the deer are already at, you have a way better odds than just putting it somewhere in the middle of the woods and hoping a deer walks by and hits it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of you gotta kind of be strategic on where you place it. Either a super heavy trail or a feed edge right where a pinch point is where they all come out, which pinch again. Pinch are a big thing if you have if you know where bedding the food is, you set it up somewhere in the middle odds are you're going to have them. Mm. The biggest thing is just putting it where they're already at. So can I make a scrape so I can get a deer on camera? Yeah, you can make a scrape. It's called a mock scrape. And a ton of people take this really seriously. You know, they think it's an exact science and who knows, maybe it is. But for us, I can only tell you what's worked for us. And to be honest, we do not take it that seriously. Um, we don't put on gloves. We don't buy the expensive kits. We just basically find a pinch point between food and bedding. We walk that trail. We pick out an overhanging branch. We prefer there to be no other hanging branches on the trail just to increase the chances that it takes. And then right underneath of it, we kick the dirt up, kind of mimicking what you'd actually see on a natural scrape. If there are other overhanging branches in close proximity, we like to cut those down just to kind of create a visual marker that that is a scrape tree. And then at the end of it, if one of us has to take a pee, we go ahead and pee on it. That's what deer do. Um, Studies show that after If you just watch that whole thing you're kind of sus that after 20 minutes human urine actually just smells like ammonia And we haven't noticed it really spooking any mature bucks off so give it a shot make a mock scrape See if you can get some deer on camera well, folks, that's going to do it for today's episode. Please consider subscribing because when I tell you Creek Kings is going to go to a whole new level, I'm being serious. We are about to take this thing 
way further than we expected. So please consider subscribing because in the near future, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool giveaways. Speaking of giveaways, we're giving away a free Prime inline. Just click the link below to figure out how to enter. It's completely free. It takes five seconds. So stay tuned because you are not ready for what's about to happen. You dirty boy. It's the smell of Red Bull that gets him. It's the smell of Red Bull that gets him amped up. Red Bull and nicotine, baby. Woo!